All right, well, here we are at the moment that I was expecting. It's the, now that I created the series, can I pass it? So I am at hamexam.org, and you're going to get to watch me do an online new extra that expires in 2028. I created the exam and a playlist, and the playlist should appear up there somewhere. And if you want to try to pass the extra exam, you can use my videos. I did as much as I possibly could do based on my experience in the videos. Sometimes I just give you the answer. A lot of times I try to explain why the answer is what it is. But we're going to do a practice exam. And here we go. This pool is not active yet. So keep in mind that uh, July 1st, that's a week from today plus one more day. So here we go. And I'm going to talk my way through this. I hope you don't mind. If you don't want to hear me talk, just hit the mute button. So the question number one says, which S parameter represents input port return loss or reflection coefficient? So I believe that is S... 21. See, I'm already forgetting the answers that fast. I'm trying to think on my nano VNA, I'm going to say S11. I think S21 is the other one. So return loss or reflection coefficient, I'm going to go S11 on that. What is the purpose of connecting equal value resistors across a power supply filter capacitors? That is to discharge... It can equalize. It can also prevent, provide a minimum load on the supply. I believe all these choices are correct. I think these answer choices are mixed up. That's interesting. Which of the following is often determined using a Smith chart? Impedance. Yeah, it's definitely not beam headings. Can't do that. On, well, no, no. It's impedance. Where should a, sh this is safety, where should a shock absorbing lanyard be attached to a tower when working above ground? It should be to the belt of the fall harness, to the next lowest set of guys, it's above the climber's head level. I, I, I mean, it should be attached to your belt somewhere, <laughs> but it should be above the climber's head level. Okay. What are the principal frequencies that appear at the output of a mixer? That is going to be the input frequencies with their sum and difference of the frequencies. I think I'm doing good so far. What type of radiation pattern is created by two one quarter wavelength vertical antennas spaced a quarter wavelength apart and fed 90 degrees out of phase. Now this is one, just skimming over the answer, I don't remember, but I do know that it is not omnidirectional and is not going to be a cardioid. Two quarter wave vertical quarter wavelength apart. So I'm gonna go figure eight broadside. I know it's either B or D. Um, it's actually not D. It's probably B or C. And I'm gonna be. I'm going with B. What feature of a cardioid pattern makes antenna makes it useful for direction finding? It has a very good single null. Why should effective radiated power be limited to a satellite that uses a linear transponder? And that is to avoid reducing the downlink power to all other users. I think I got that one. How does the gain of an ideal op amp vary with frequency? It should not. Because it's an ideal world. So ideal was the key in that one. Um, we don't work with ideal. 
but when you do designs, you try to look at ideal. What causes interference received is a series of carriers at regular intervals across a wide frequency range. Switch mode power supplies. I actually had this problem last night. Uh, I was editing the videos for this series and posting them and I just happened, I've been doing this experiment. My tower is being worked on when my friends can come over and I turned on the counter lights in the kitchen. I had the whole kitchen on. It was after midnight and usually it goes dark at midnight, but I turned the whole kitchen back on. Well, I had to take care of what an old old man said once before a sked on SKCC. Had to take care of some biologics. Walked by the radio. It's hooked to a 100 amp hour battery. It's been running for a few days, just idling. And I fired up 80 meter AM, S9, and then some across the board broadband noise. Started unplugging all my wife's stuff first because I didn't even think. I mean, these things have been here. I did have to change the power supply on them. Well, I walked in and, and I told the A-L-E-X-A -E to turn off the counter lights. And then I ran back to the rig and sure enough, whoop, quiet. Maybe S1 with some, some pops from possibly weather. It is looking kind of weathery outside. It's 2.50 in the afternoon. That's not fog. Okay, so that's enough about uh, E4, E12. What impedance does a quarter wave length transmission line present to an RF generator when the line is open at the far end? So we have two choices that we know from here, um, very low and very high. So I think the half wave length when it's open is like a capacitor. So, what's it going to be? I don't remember this one, honestly. I don't remember. But I know I got a 50-50 chance between these two answers. Impedance does a quarter wavelength trans... It seems like quarter wavelengths are used as matching stubs. I'm going high impedance on that just because of matching. For some reason, that... that comes to mind. Which of the following parameters does a spectrum analyzer display on the vertical and horizontal axes? It is going to be signal amplitude and the frequency. Because an oscilloscope does amplitude over time. And we know spectrum analyzers are not SWR. So these are some test taking strategies. I hope that um, help somebody who wants to do this. Oh my gosh, there's 50 questions. I need to hush. What is the approximate bandwidth of a 13 words per minute international? That's 52. We talked extensively in the video about that. Uh, W2AEW did not come up with the same answer for a 15 word per minute with a four millisecond rise time. But I'm not hating him for it. His test, I think, was slightly different than how this is actually counted up. So, I, I, and, I and I could not find the resources to figure it out. I gave up. How is an interlay scanning pattern generated in fast scan NTSC television system? Well, let's see. Odd number of lines in one field, even number of lines in the next. Sounds about right. I know it does odd than even, so that sounds about right. Which of the following is most frequently used as a band pass or notch filter in a VHF and UHF transceivers? You know what? I don't even remember going over this question, y'all. It's not a fear filter because that you're not going to not a Salon key. These these are very similar. I've never heard of a swinging choke. We're going to go with a helical filter. Now the helical was the one that had the um, 
the heat the the coils that you could adjust uh, the the rod that goes in between. And I remember when I looked at DigiKey that they had frequencies. So that's how I remembered that one. Now, see, that, I hope I don't miss it, but I'm saying I did a little more research on that by looking at DigiKey and seeing what they were. What effect does lowering a signal's transmitted elevation angle have on ionospheric HF skip propagation? So the elevation angle, the distance covered by each hop increases. This is like play and pull. You know, if you hit the wall straight on, it's going to come back at you like this. But if you can hit that wall at an angle, the incidence angle, so the greater angle, I don't know if I can do this, but the greater the angle that it hits, the farther the distance. I even drew a picture for that, I believe. What happens to SWR bandwidth when one or more loading coils are used to resonate an electrically short antenna? The bandwidth decreases because you're raising the Q. What is an effect of excessive phase noise in a SDR's receiver's master clock oscillator? It can combine with strong signals. Phase noise, phase noise, phase noise. Yeah, I think that's the one that combines with strong signals to generate interference. I think that's right. Oh, auroral propagation. Okay, I had a conversation in the video about the movie frequency and how Dennis Quaid's character, uh, I assume that was the, the son, uh, Scout or whatever his name was, I can't remember. But they use single sideband, but CW, I believe, was best for auroral propagation. So... I do remember that. What is the maximum mean power level for a spurious emission below 30 megahertz with respect to the fundamental emission? You know, for some reason, I always think negative 43 decibels is the maximum acceptable level. So that's what we're going for. Um, if you convert that, oh, I was supposed to have all kinds of screens up here to work math out. I think I'm going to have to work some math out. It's too late now. I'll just have to talk you through it. What is a phase lock loop? Uh, if you take this and divide by 10 and go 10 to 4.3, I think that uh, 10 to 4.3, 10 to fourth power is 10,000 times less than the fundamental. Um, that's that's why we measure things in decibels, because those numbers are astronomical. A phase lock loop is, um, you know what? I remember a servo loop. I remember a servo loop in this answer. It's not push-pull amplifier. It is not a monostable, because mono is a single shot. So servo loop. We have two answers. Stable reference oscillator is what's really calling me to this one. Um, it does have a VCO, not to be confused with your VCR. It, it should have a low-pass filter, and it should have a phase detector, because that's what's going to correct it if it gets... Because phase lock loop is supposed to be like, locked on, going with C. Okay, what is the approximate ratio of peak envelope to average power in an unprocessed single sideband phone signal? This is one of those I could not really explain as much, but I do know it's 2.5 to 1, So, uh, and it was all based on your speech. So what is your speech? Um, are, are you high pitch like this, or are you really low like this without any mid-range? Um, I like to use the Mickey Mouse voice, so I bet I'm three to one on that bad boy. <laughs> what function is performed by FFT, Fast Fourier Transform? So, you go from the time domain 
because an oscilloscope an oscilloscope is in the time domain it shows you a waveform over time the fast Fourier transform is giving you your peaks of frequency again on that w2 aew video that we watched when he was doing the cw uh what the heck this is because i'm not on a certain medication that i can't make words happen uh hi ashley um that's my wife she won't watch this with me i, I guarantee it but um the cw bandwidth he showed you it in the frequency domain with the fundamental and all of the odd frequencies that add to make a square wave and straight edges and um so there's that all right so what we're almost halfway through what is the deviation ratio of an fm phone signal having a maximum frequency swing so so that's the deviation of 7.5 kilohertz if the highest modulation is 3.5 kilohertz Seemed like this was this was a subtraction problem. Well, it's 7.5 minus 3.5 is 4. Huh. This is FM, though. I don't remember this one. Did I study the right material? Okay, I'm going to go 2.14 because that seems, that's the deviation ratio. Huh, I don't remember that one. So we're making a wild guess, always pick C. Uh, if you go through the whole test and always pick C, you'll make about a 20. Which of the following is an advantage of by CMOS logic? So you get the best of both worlds is what I said, the best of both worlds. They are not, CMOS is not immune to electrostatic damage. We're not worried about cost. That rules out that. So it has to have the high input impedance and the low output impedance of a BJT. So that I, I, it seems like I do remember that one. Which of the following circuits continuously alternates between two states without an external clock signal that is an as stable multi vibrator a 555 chip is sort of like an as stable multi vibrator um it 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 doesn't have an external clock signal it uses the rc time constant so i feel like i'm on like who wants to be a millionaire but you can miss a couple what is the phase angle between the voltage across and the current through a series RLC circuit if the capacitive reactance is 300 ohms, the resistance is 100 ohms, and capacitive... This is where I needed that calculator. So um, let's go over here and let's add another scene and... Uh, let me fire up the calculator. Give me just a moment. I'm, I'm not cheating, I promise. I'm just going to get the calculator on the screen. Um, oh, here it is. Does it show? There we go. Okay. F transition. All right, so we're going to bring up the calculator on this one. Seems like I remember that you had to find out, you had to find out, is it capacitive reactance or inductive reactance? So in this case, it is inductive reactance. So inductive reactance is ice. So current leads voltage. Voltage lags current. So how did I show you how to find the degrees? Do you remember? Because I don't. I do not remember. Man, this sucks. This, These are going to be the ones that if you don't go over it a few times, 
it's definitely going to throw you off. So, um, man, it something about a graph. It's something about a graph that we were figuring out the um, oh, I'm wasting time here. Wasting time. I'm trying to think of how to find the answer we need right here. I know I won't remember the answer, but I'm gonna put another thing up here. I hope I don't get in trouble for singing that. Um, we're gonna do a window capture here, and we're gonna go to paint really quick and see... If we can um, see if we can't figure this out. Well, it won't let you use paint on the video, so that is unacceptable. You can see my um, cursor going across the screen, but I'm gonna have to use paint really quick and draw a graph and figure out what that angle is because I showed you how to do it and now I forgot. So paint is on the screen, you just can't see it. I don't know why it's struggling to show the paint program in the uh, browser. And I'm, I, I, this is uncut, so I mean, I don't have a calculator or um, anything like that on the screen, so I'm just going to paint the whole thing black and see if I can draw in white. Let's see. Um, colors, draw in white. No, you're not going to be able to see this. This sucks. So I made a graph, and we have 200 of capacitive reactants. Is that right? Yep, 200 of capacitive reactants. And resistance is 100 ohms to 200. Okay, I'm drawing on my I'm drawing on my my thing. Resistance is 100. Capacitive reactance is 200. So it's greater than a 45 degree angle, it looks like. So I'm going to say 63 degrees with voltage lagging the current. So I'm going to go ahead and, get, and minimize paint, get that off the screen so it's not in the way. I drew a graph. If I could have drawn it on paper, we're probably going to miss that one, but I forgot how to do it, so I'm going to have to go back and watch that again. What is the photovoltaic effect? Not voltage. It's the conversion of light to electrical energy. Yes, that is it. What is a shock key barrier diode? Shock key was a metal semiconductor junction. Shock key, metal semiconductor junction so i just want to go back to this if you can remember your formulas and the tricks that i showed you in the video this should have been easier than um if i had remembered it so at any rate carrying along what is a use for a wilkinson's divider wilkinson divider you know i lost my crap i just all of the words lost in my mind um, when I was discussing the Wilkinson divider. I'm a, sorry about that in that video, but divide power equally between 250 ohm lobes while maintaining a 50 ohm input impedance. What is the characteristic of a grounded grid amplifier? 
I believe it was low input impedance. The ground and grid. I remember it was the grid was grounded. One one was grounded with a low pass or a high pass filter, one of the two. And then the picture had it on the other side. And the power from the radio was coming in through the plate and going out through the um, cathode. I'm going to say low input impedance. Because honestly, I don't remember. I know it's not this. And I know it's not low bandwidth. So it's either going to be high power gain. I'm going low input impedance. Okay, the National Radio Quiet Zone. We saw it was in, uh, was it West Virginia? It's the National Radio Astronomy Observatory where uh, astronomers, they're not just looking at what comes in through light. They're looking at radio waves. And a lot of things give off different radio waves, and that's how they can find the pictures of these things because you can't see it with your eyeballs. How do APRS stations relay data? Packet digipeters. I mean, that's how we relay it. I have a digipeter here. It relays it. But unfortunately, we do not have ACNACs. Use, I mean, we can, but we use the digipeters to relay it. Okay, which is the most common input an output impedance of uh, these were microwave oh I forgot it but remember it was for radio so it was 50 ohms MMI mimics uh, <sighs> you don't even have to remember it as long as you know one of those words was microwave 50 ohms what kind of diagram is used to show the phase relationship between impedances at a given frequency? Phase, phaser. That was the memory. Uh, that was the memory mnemonic that I gave you for that one, and so that helped me remember that one. It's a phase and phaser diagram. In what application is gallium arsenide used as a semiconductor material? Semiconductor. We talked about gallium arsenide was uh, good in microwave circuits, if I'm not mistaken. Which of the following cannot be transmitted over an amateur radio mesh network without even looking at the answer? That's going to be. Um, that's going to be. Yeah, messages encoded to obscure their meaning. I was trying to think of VPN, and that was the discussion I read the other day um, while preparing for this was, uh, could you use a VPN over amateur radio net mesh network? And it, it was up for debate. What must the VE team do with the application form if the examinee does not pass the exam? You must return that back to the examinee. So, no, we do not send it off. Um, we de don't destroy it. You return the application to the examinee. Okay. Because you don't, I guess, no records of wrong, right? What is the disadvantage of decreasing the number of wire segments in an antenna model below 10 segments per half wavelength? This had something to do with the input impedance of the feed point NCVEC no not NCVEC what did I tell you all that you should use see again medication can't remember things um, you could use that uh, antenna, antenna modeling program uh, check that out what is the phase relationship between the current through and voltage across a series resonant circuit at resonance. If it's resonating, I'm going to say they're in phase. You know, I don't remember that one either. Current through and voltage series resonance circuit at resonance. When it resonates, it's like, oh.
we're going to get this one wrong. We're definitely going to get this one wrong. And I don't know why we're going to get it wrong, but I think we're going to get number 40 wrong. Okay, which of the following improves the efficiency of a ground-mounted quarter-way vertical antenna? Installing a ground radial system. Because ground itself is not the most fantastic um, ground. But over salt water, tell you, over salt water, that thing would kick chicken. Okay, number 42, the ultimate answer to life, the universe, and everything. In which band segment would you expect the highest level of SSB or CW activity? That would be in the weak signal, uh, weak, yeah, weak signal segment of the band. Most of the activity is going to be near that calling frequency. You want to be able to be found. Which of these digital modes does not support keyboard to keyboard? Operation, that's Whisper. Whisper is automagic. Which of the following HF amateur bands include allocations for space stations? And I do recall saying something to the tune of your major bands. Your major bands. All right, what is the primary cause of law? That's the skin effect, isn't it? Yep, there it is right there. I didn't even have to read that one. Uh, film capacitors, you know, you got that little skinny film in there. It, it wants to run across the skin. What causes intermodulation in an electronic circuit? Intermod in an electronic circuit. Intermod. Intermod. Uh, we're going to go with nonlinear circuits or devices because then nonlinear means that it's not a perfect representation so you're going to get some spurious mess out of that. So that's what I'm going for there. We have three more questions left. What is one advantage of using ASCII code for data communications? Bado uses a character for shift to send numerical and special characters. It is possible uppercase and lowercase text. Because ASCII code is uh, 7 bits, 8 bits if you use even or odd parity. Which of the following indicates the greatest solar flare intensity? X. So we got an X there. And um, Okay, if an amateur station is installed a ship or aircraft... What condition must be met before the station is operated? So the amateur station must agree not to transmit. That one was, that's, amateur must, no. Amateur station must have, what? Okay, operation must be approved by the master of the ship or pilot in command of the aircraft. What is piezoelectricity? We're on the last question. I feel like I've done quite well. Um, the ability of materials to generate electromagnet. No. Character that have an index reflect depends. But, 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 no. Stress. A characteristic of a materials when stressed and flex when voltage is provided. Are y'all ready for this? I didn't have to use the calculator, so I guess I can minimize that. Let's get ready. I, it, it said that I haven't skipped any questions. I'm not going back because either I know it or I don't. I only missed two. That's what I'm talking about. Now, about three weeks ago, I would not have passed this. Uh, so... I'm going to say that doing the videos really helped me. Look at that. I only missed two. I only missed freaking two. Let's go see which ones I missed so we can learn. Ah, uh, see, I told you I had a 50-50 chance on that one. And <laughs> I bombed it. I bombed it with a 50-50% chance. And guess what? 
I should have stuck with my first answer on that one. Because you saw, go back, go back and look. I definitely started with a low impedance first, and then I went, oh, but this one might be used for matching. But think about it, matching would have been if it was shorted at the far end. So, but I can be an extra. Hey guys, I want you to, if you're going to go through all 50 videos and practice like I did and, and, and listen intently instead of, you know, just watching uh, whatever shows you got going on Netflix this summer, um, actually sitting down for six minutes a day, six, 12 minutes, depend, all the videos are different lengths, and researching and looking at this stuff. You know, I had one guy comment, forget his call sign, but you can go find it on one of the uh, one of the technician exams. Uh, he was talking about the ARRL um, handbook. And you could, if you have it or if you want to look at your local library, I think I do donated mine to the Georgia Pines Library because I looked around and I don't think I have mine anymore. I think I donated all of my books because I like to look at the web for the most part. I have one book. It's The Art of Electronics that I'll dig through every once in a while. But, you know, this, the, the task of be becoming an extra, you know what? I didn't have to do any, it didn't ask me about any electronic stuff, did it? I guess there were other questions mixed in there, but hey, to get a 96, I want to say that that's almost what I scored when I took it a few years ago, a long couple years ago. Um, I think I made either a 96 or a 98 because I, at that time, I just memorized all 850 some odd answers. But this time, I really tried to work on more than just memorization, but to be able to rationalize why an answer is an answer. Now, if you're a terrible test taker, yeah, that it, it I understand this could be look it, it could look like an insurmountable task, but that is why instead of doing the 10 sub elements, I did the sub elements broken down into each section. So you're looking at 15, maybe if I rambled 20 minutes a day. So I think you got this. With that, I think I'm going to go ahead and throw this video up on YouTube just to show that I did it. I did it. And and I'll be honest with you, those of you that did the uh, Thursday night, and, and I may not do Thursday night trivia. I may start doing it on another night because there have been some, uh, some clashes with some other YouTube friends of mine. And I think because they're just more popular than I am, they won. But... Um, if you it, the folks that know they know that I would I would not get most of the questions right. So there you have it. I have passed. So this goes back to our original question. Now that I created the series, can I pass it? And there uh, Bettinger's law says that the usually the answer is no, but this time the answer is yes. So with that, I am Robbie, W1RCP, and I passed it, so the answer is yes. Y'all have a great one. Please like this video. Check out the playlist at the end, and if you want to go for your extra so that you can give back to the ham community, if you'll go look at my ham community in YouTube, you'll see a post where I had a hypothetical situation. Check that out. Y'all have a great one. Thanks for watching. Hope you did good too. 73.